Hey everyone, welcome back to part 2 of making a small strip sander using a hand mixer as a motor. In the last episode we left off just after turning the lower wheel, so now let's get a move on and mount that drive wheel to the machine. In order to do so we're going to drill a 22mm hole in the middle- Oh sorry to interrupt, I was just wondering if the 94% out there watching this without being subscribed to my channel could maybe give that red button a click that would really make me a lot happier. Now back to the video. In the middle of this 8mm thick 2x2 two two inch piece of plywood for the ball bearing to press fit into. If the ball bearing fits too loosely like it does here, basically I could just push it in with my fingers, it does help to glue a strip of paper around the inner edge of the hole, roughly like this, to make the fit a little bit tighter. To press the bearing onto the wheel I'm going to slide this spacer over the shaft and crunch it down using the drill press. Why use the drill press? Because popping it in like a cork in a wine bottle looks better on camera than fumbling around with clamps does. Now since I kind of need to get the wheel on there straight and the output shaft on these mixers is just more than a little bit slack, I'm using this square block with a cutout on one end to get the shaft straight and then measure its position in respect to the chassis which then allows me to measure out the exact same thing on the real deal before screwing it on. It should run smoothly now without pulling down the RPM of the mixer at all. If it does, you did something wrong I'm afraid, but don't worry in that case because you can still do some minor adjustments by loosening up these screws and tapping on it with a hammer and retightening them. That's exactly why I'm going to glue this on later on to prevent this plate from wandering due to slight vibrations in use. To make the wheel less slippery to the belt, I'm cutting off a piece of bicycle inner tube and stretching it over the wheel. Now we've got ourselves a nice spinning lower wheel. Next up is machining the support beam for the upper wheel. Regular screws should do just fine. No need wasting precious hardwood guys. The upper wheel mount is kind of a complicated shape, so I printed the new design on a sheet of paper, which I'm going to glue on this scrap piece of pine plywood and use it as a template to cut out my part. The first one of these holes is not very interesting, it's just there as a pivot point for the upper wheel mount, but the second one accommodates the upper wheel shaft, which needs to tilt up and down to allow for some belt tracking adjustment. Accordingly I need to first drill it with the 5.5mm drill bit and then enlarge it to 6mm for one third of the way from either side to get a cross section roughly similar to an hourglass. Yes, I guess the orientation for a cross section of a hole is debatable. Is it lengthwise or is it at a right angle? Leave your opinion in the comments down below. This next part is one of the few hardwood parts in the entire build. That's why I'm destroying another one of my childhood's worst memories by cutting up this red toy block baby me used to hate when playing with blocks. On one side of the now smaller toy block we need to cut a dado, just wide enough for the shaft to easily slide around in it, but without too much margin for it to wiggle around. Actually, the only reason to make the part from hardwood is because this hole is tapped directly into the wood. Once the glue has set, we can round over the front edge and sand everything nice and smooth. Finally time for the assembly line. The upper wheel mount screws directly to the vertical beam using this one bolt here. And once we get the upper wheel done it's going to sit in there like this. 
The belt tension can be adjusted by tilting this back and forth and the tracking is done via another screw knob that goes in here, pushing down on the shaft like this. I'm actually quite proud of this design just because it's so super simple and it works like a charm, at least I hope it does. Because there isn't much to it that could break. Whatever, to put an end to the self-adulation, let's do the upper wheel. The upper wheel is made up of three layers of 10mm plywood with a recess for ball bearing on either side. The middle is drilled out to 16mm and since I don't have a Forstner bit that size, I'm simply diverting a plug cutter for the job. Since the inner diameter of the bearings and the diameter of the dough hook don't really match that well, I'm going to super glue this piece of hardwood onto the shaft and turn it into an adapter. If there is one thing I hate, it's when things don't turn out as precise as they're supposed to be. But never mind, in this case it shouldn't make much of a difference. Centered or not, either way it should now be ready to be put together and like before I'm using the drill press to pop it in, although I wouldn't recommend abusing any drill press this way very often because it might actually deform or break if you push it too hard. The tricky part about this industrial design as you might call it and having the wheel spin freely on the shaft instead of having the shaft spin with it is that now I can't put it in the drill press to turn it into a nice round wheel anymore. It would literally spin on the shaft. So what I came up with to spin the wheel instead of spinning the entire shaft was to screw a temporary pulley to the wheel itself. That's what these screw holes are for by the way. I also need to put a bunch of nuts between the pulley and the wheel to act as spacers or else I won't be able to reach the wheel properly with the chisel because of the belt running halfway in front of it. This now screws on and then just pushes into this jig if you can't even call a piece of wood a jig. And then it mounts directly on the two bolts that are already attached to the machine. And now we can put on the belt and drive our upper wheel directly with the hand mixer. And off it goes. Another problem we've got is that being just screwed to the wheel, the pulley isn't properly centered and doesn't really run through either as you can see here. Fortunately I can fix that pretty easily by just pushing it against the belt sander at an angle which makes it spin up and get sanded down simultaneously. That's better now. I also put a good crown on it so the belt doesn't slide off as easily anymore. Now I can install it. Tension the belt. Well, upper wheel almost done I guess, just need to stretch a piece of bicycle inner tube over it and put it in there and we can try it out. Now I'm also not gonna lie, the belt did jump off quite a few times on me until I had the idea of stretching a piece of bicycle inner tube over the temporary pulley as well. 
That made it stay on for most of the time, it still jumped off once or twice, but once or twice, it's just once or twice. Also, it would help to use a pulley that is wider than the belt, because my pulley is 6mm and the belt is 9mm. That's a little difference. Anyway, I'll just put that in there and wrap up the video. For now I'm just gonna pull the lever for the belt tension by hand and fix it with a clamp. Now it should run. Adjust the tracking. And we can sand something! Now I obviously still need to tweak the lower wheel a little bit because the belt's not quite running centered even though it is running in the middle up here so I need to tilt the wheel slightly downwards but I'm not gonna do that today anymore because this is officially the end of today's video now in the next episode we're going to do some tweaking like I said the table, the skid plate, some cosmetic stuff basically finish everything up make it look exactly like my CAD model and with that said I really hope you enjoyed regardless whether you did or not thanks a lot for watching anyways Feel free to like and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, by the way, hopefully the next video is going to be an electronics video by the end of the month. So stay tuned for that. Bye!